to order. First, let me announce all the decisions of the board are final. If there's anyone agreed by the decision of this board, they may appeal to circuit court within 15 days of the board's decision. Also, no permits or license can be issued until that 15-day appeal period has expired and or no appeal has been filed. For information regarding the board's decision and appeal to circuit court, the Office of Land Use Administration will be your contact. As you come to the board, or excuse me, to the podium, if you'll give us your name and address for the record and address your comments and questions to the board, not to others in the audience and not to the staff unless we ask the staff for guidance. And I'm going to start with a um, roll call. Oh, one other comment. There's a large number of you here probably for the some of the same applications. If you'll identify your four people that you wish to have speak on your behalf, I would ask you to do that in advance. And that way you, we can kind of keep the meeting uh, schedule going here. All right, roll call. Mr. Davis. Here. Mr. Coleman. Here. Mr. Metcalf. Here. Mr. Burroughs. Here. Mr. Melling. Here. Mr. Golden. Here. And I'm William Guess. We have all members present. It takes five to uh, approve a motion. And we have a quorum, so therefore we can proceed. And Mr. Anderson's here as our legal advisor. And we will go in order, uh, starting with 5054 Old Shell Road, application 6159, 6119, 6063. Good afternoon. I am Todd LaCour. My address is 600 Shenandoah Road. My brother Jeff LaCour, along with our wives, are the developers of 5054 Old Shell Road the former Rester brothers. We are extremely excited about this development for the revitalization of this area, especially after receiving so much positive feedback from the community and the support from the village of Spring Hill. Our plans for this property include total restoration of the old service station building, an addition of 1,500 square feet, which will include an open concept kitchen, as well as a beautiful patio bordered with flower boxes facing Old Shell Road. It's going to be the perfect place for family and friends to gather and to enjoy a delicious meal. In its current state, this property is not just an eyesore, but it is by definition a blighted building and has been vacant for some time now. We are well aware of the concerns brought up before this board regarding the previous developer's proposed project and want to highlight some of the major differences between the two. What we, want to be very clear, what we want to be very clear of is what this is not. This is not to be a bar. This space will not be a music venue. This space is definitely not a place for all day partying and drinking. What this concept will bring to Spring Hill is a family friendly neighborhood restaurant currently serving breakfast and lunch. Our family's dream is to create an environment that is welcoming, clean, and one that the entire community will be proud to patronize, especially since they will be able to drive, walk, bike, or stroll to this location. Thank you to the Village of Spring Hill for investing over $2 million in sidewalk improvements for the area. Today we are here seeking the board's approval for three variance requests, use, parking surface, and buffering. While we are not seeking to rezone this property, we are asking for a variance of usage, which would change the status of a service station to a restaurant. For the past 40 plus years, 5054 Old Shell Road has been in operation as a service station. We understand and know that another service station is exactly what this community does not need in this area. Our plan to have a neighborhood restaurant in this location falls directly in line with the vision of the village of Spring Hill as well as the mayor's initiative with the map of Mobile. After, after receiving the staff report late Friday afternoon, it seems there may have been some misunderstanding regarding the hours of use. Currently, our tenant has over 20 locations across the southeast operating from 7 a.m. to 3 p.m., Monday through Saturday. As you will find, this information is included in the application. However, we are not seeking to be restricted by these hours. The hours of use we are seeking are Monday through Saturday, 6 a.m. to 11 p.m., 
and Sundays 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. We informed the board and the board's attorney of this clarification this past Saturday. Currently, our tenant operates under the hours I stated previously, but are looking into the possibility of serving a light evening meal as well as Sunday brunch, something that would be most welcomed in the community. We would respectfully like you to reconsider these hours of operation. On Sunday, February 25th, we had a meeting at Dr. and Mrs. Philip Madonia's house along with residents from Old Shell Road, Babs Court, and Horlister Court who opposed the last project. After hearing our plans, a good number from that group were clapping and cheering for us and wishing us success on this project. Also, we learned and confirmed that concerned neighbors came to an agreement with the previous developer to close the business no later than 11 p.m., knowing that they would probably have people there until 12 a.m. In good faith, we want to put to rest what seems to be one of their biggest concerns of the last project, which was time of use. And also, we will have, there will not be loud live music. Our second variance request is in regards to the parking surface. We are asking for approval to use crushed gravel aggregate. This material will allow the rainwater to permeate the surface of the parking lot. We are well aware of the drainage issue the city has had on the southwest end of Border Drive across from our property and are making every effort not to make that matter worse. This surfacing option is the most environmental friendly for the area and material that we could have chosen. It should also be noted that we will have a paved parking space for the handicap. Our last variance request is for the buffer requirement. We do not think a bordered wall along border drive seems uh, to make sense for uh, safety purposes. We believe a wall could dilute the ability to see pedestrians when pulling in and out of the parking lot as well as a diminished sidewalk visibility. However, in the staff report, screens were mentioned several times and we are willing to provide adequate screening that would not hinder the visibility <clears throat> by using smaller bushes and shrubs. Also, by eliminating this wall, it would help us keep two additional parking spaces in the middle of our parking lot. The revitalization that has happened on Old Shell Road and McGregor Avenue over the past few years is finally going to extend to another section of the Village of Spring Hill. We look forward to working with the City of Mobile, the Village of Spring Hill, and surrounding neighbors to ensure this project will be one enjoyed by all. We respectfully ask the board to approve the variance to a restaurant with hours of operation from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Monday through Saturday and Sunday 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Also the approval of the aggregate for the parking lot that will include bumper stops as well as the variance to eliminate a border wall. Thank you. Okay, any questions of the board for the applicant? Okay, thank you. Is anyone in the audience that wishes to speak on this matter that has anything to add? Good afternoon. Your name and address, please. Good afternoon. My name is Kelly Myers. I live at 4270 Horloester Court. My home is within 300 feet of the property, 5054 Old Shell Road. I've spoken here on other occasions uh, requesting approval of the other applications that have come before you for this property. Um, questions have come up about who's most concerned about what happens here. I was the head of Park Project 08, the group that redeveloped the park across the street from this particular property. I very much want progress to continue in this area and, um, and very much want it to benefit the community as a whole. Um, like I said, I've spoken twice in favor of the previous applications. The last time I was here in September, I presented information that showed that the surrounding community overwhelmingly supports change for this area. For the last application, we promoted the information throughout the community and placed petitions in area businesses and on front porches and asked that residents seek out one of those petitions to sign. The proposal at that time was for a larger restaurant and bar. As of September 11th, um, 2017, 
we had collected 1,779 signatures in favor of that larger restaurant and bar at 5054. Of all of the parcels within a quarter mile of 5054 Old Shell Road, 59% of property owners of all the parcels that fall within that quarter mile had signed in favor saying that they wanted that application to be approved. Now, the 41% that did not sign, that does not mean that they opposed it. It either means that they were unaware of what was happening, that they did not make the effort to find a petition, that they really didn't care, or that they could have opposed it. As of today, 828 people have joined the Facebook page support for the redevelopment of Rester Brothers in Spring Hill. While we understand that you have many factors to consider when you make these decisions, we left after the last meeting feeling that the residents in Spring Hill were being held hostage to the property in its current state because of a very small minority of people who were opposing these applications for change. Um, if they were not requesting that it be um, residential development. Most of the previous concerns are no longer valid with this new concept, and we are very thankful that we have another opportunity for progress and hope very much that y'all will approve this application today. Spring Hill, the residents in Spring Hill want this change. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Okay. Anyone else in the audience? By the way, if you will, turn your cell phones, electronic devices on silent or off so we don't have disruptions. Please proceed. Hi, my name is Sherry Pierce and I'm the Vice President of the Board of the Village of Spring Hill. I live at 3966 Pinebrook Drive South and I'm here today to speak to you in support of the development proposed at 5054 Old Shell Road. The Village of Spring Hill is in full support of this development. This development will be going in under the Village of Spring Hill Master Plan and is in complete compliance with the Village of Spring Hill Master Plan and we advocate for developments um, that, that fit our plan. The Village of Spring Hill Master Plan was sanctioned by over 500 residents of the community. It was approved by the Planning Commission and City Council and adopted by the City of Mobile as part of the overall Master Plan for the City of Mobile. We feel that this development is a great fit for the area. It is a soft commercial development and keeps with the family friendly neighborhood surrounding it. Renovating old gas stations has become a um, commercial trend and we love that they are keeping a piece of the community and transforming it into this wonderful family friendly restaurant. In addition, this development adds to the basic mission and desires of the village of Spring Hill, which is to create a pedestrian friendly community. By adding the Village of Spring Hill streetscapes and sidewalks, this development assists our mission of making the Village of Spring Hill a pedestrian friendly environment. The Village of Spring Hill will install four sidewalk projects just this year in the year 2018. They are Old Shell Road from Myrtlewood on the north side, um, from Myrtlewood to I-65, McGregor South on the west side, Bitten Spur, and then on, north, um, on Old Shell Road on the north side from Loretta Park to University. This development, when completed, will be connected with a complete network of sidewalks encompassing dozens of neighborhoods and thousands of Spring Hill residents. This is exactly the type of development that the Village of Spring Hill seeks. Again, the Village of Spring Hill Master Plan was created by over 500 residents. This plan is what the community wanted, and by being compliant with our master plan, the Village of Spring Hill is in total support of this development. Have Thank a you. Question. Sure. The border wall that's being required by the city, how does that fit into the master plan traditionally? Tra well, tra well, if it were on the street where it, there, there was another like neighborhood or whatnot, we would um, probably want that, but since it's not, we do not expect that. Even if it borders the park side? Even if it borders the park side. Okay, what yes. about the hours as far as uh, 11 o'clock? We're very comfortable with the hours. Is that consistent, consistent. with other yes. restaurants in the Spring Hill? It is, yes. Okay. Yes. Any other questions for the uh, neighborhood? All right, I think we have room for one more. Thanks. Is that the case? Thank you. 
Good afternoon, Jeb Shell, 3725 Calderwood. Um, I'm a neighbor of this project and I'm very much in support of it, but also um, as an investor myself and other properties and, and businesses, um, I'm with Hargrove here downtown and I remember back in 2005 when we first decided to come down here and develop. It was pretty sparse down here. There weren't a lot, there was not a lot of foot traffic going on. And uh, we, we did the first project and then the second project and it kept going. And one thing that we noticed through that is by being down here or being in an area in general, it creates foot traffic, it creates activity. And once that activity starts happening, people feel one, more secure in going into an area and being around an area, but it also lends other people that might be looking and right on the edge to invest to think about that as well when they see the activity. So this location right here is an extension from right there at Old Shell and McGregor to where it'll start that development. And I'd, I'd go to say it'd be like a catalyst for other folks who are local, locally owned, like the liqueurs are, to think about taking their money and bringing it into Spring Hill or different areas, which gives more activity. So um, I'm very much in support of this and I look forward to getting my wife and kids on their bikes and riding down the new sidewalks and having breaks over there and I'd be happy to answer any questions you have. Any questions? Thank you. Okay, thank you. All right, anyone in opposition today? Good, Good afternoon. afternoon. Jerry Spiegel, 4320 Bab Street, Mobile. Um, I live just to the, the north and the east of this uh, project. You know, I was here last time with the last developer. I won't belabor all that. Actually, this is a much an improvement, got to say. Um, I did go to the meeting at the Madonias. I came a little bit late. Uh, when I got there, there wasn't any applause. The eight people I talked to, uh, their problem with this was the time of close. I don't think anybody else that I talked to there um, had a problem with the development as is and the use. <clears throat> and that's my problem, um, is the time. My suggestion is actually a little bit more lenient than what the staff report was at you know, 6.30 or 7. Um, I think if, it, and it may not be this use, it may be if this restaurant fails, we have another user for a restaurant, um, you know, I'd rather see nine o'clock. Um, we've seen uh, Brick Pit fail. We've seen Five Guys is gone now. Uh, it's not a given that a restaurant is going to survive in the Spring Hill area. Um, it just doesn't seem to get the support. Um, I hope this one does. I will support it if the food's good, and I hope it is. I've heard it is. Um, as far as the last developer and everybody agreeing that 11 o'clock was fine, there may be some people that Mr. LaCour talked to, but I've been involved in this since a month or so before the last uh, hearing. And I've never talked to anyone. I can assure you the Madonias nor anyone I've talked to there in Bab Street uh, were okay with 11 o'clock. That was part of the problem we were here last time. To get it out of the way, uh, disagree with the staff report on one issue, which is um, they said there was, this was an unnecessary hardship existing on this property. Uh, it, it is not, in my opinion, uh, for what that's worth. It can be used as R1 for residents. This property is a little bit different than a lot of the other businesses on Spring Hill that might have some noise emitting from it. Uh, a lot of the other properties um, are next to other commercial properties and commercial uses. There are houses right next door here. Um, so my request uh, for this board is to uh, approve, either deny it as it's not, a, as, uh, there's no unnecessary hardship, but if you're going to approve it, apply restriction on the use to the restaurant, to the uh, and to the time of uh, closing of, of nine o'clock from Monday through Sunday. And uh, that would, as, as far as I'm concerned, that would certainly satisfy me. I'd love to see something happen to this property. I said the same thing I was here last time. It's not about this development and doing something with this property. It's about putting, last time it was about putting a college bar there. And this time it's not specifically about this restaurant, but it's, it's about not only this one, depending on the noise, but anybody that comes, comes later that can come in under the variance as given with a 11 p.m. Uh, a closing, which I just believe in, in this setting with the residences around it is a little bit late. They can, they can certainly carry on a business of a nice neighborhood restaurant um, for people that have kids or don't have kids who want to go down there and walk to it. 
um, and close at 9 o'clock. Thanks. Okay. Any questions? All right. Next. Thank you, sir. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Steve Nicholas, 14 Bab Street. So I'm just to the north and east of the subject location. I also spoke to you in September, and thank you for your decision um, then. I echo what Mr. Spiegel said. This is a much superior development, and if the development is as proposed, I have no objection to it, even though there's not a hint of hardship in the application. I mean, what they're really requesting is a rezoning, uh, but they're expanding a non-conforming use, which, you know, th there are issues with. But if it's this development, we have no issue with it. But again, this property is somewhat unique. You have a residence right next door. You have residences right behind it. You have residences on everything going to the north and the east. So we also would ask for at least a 9 o'clock closing time. As you all know, you know, with a restaurant, even if your hours of operation stop at 9 o'clock, that doesn't mean everything stops at 9 o'clock. And so even cleanup and things like that, so you're talking about during the week, there could be activity there, significant activity there at 10, 11 o'clock every night. And so I think that creates a hardship to the residences that are next door. So again, this proposal is a, a breakfast lunch place, which would be great. I understand that the owner of the building wants the flexibility going forward, that's fine too. Um, but the, as noted in the staff report, the food pack just down the road closes at eight on the weekends. Uh, I don't think any of the, I mean, if you go towards the university, there may be some places that stay open until 10, but nothing further in that area is open that late. Uh, and so I would ask you to put that reasonable restriction uh, on there as well. Thank you. Okay, any questions? All right, thank you. Anyone else? Wish to speak in opposition? Okay. Hi, my name is Virginia Tanner. Um, 5050 Old Shell Road is my property, which is next door to this applicant's uh, proposed restaurant. You're on the east side? Yes. Okay. Uh, my concerns are, of course, the same as my two um, opponents before me. Uh, the same thing. Also, on my property line, I'm concerned about the fencing that will be there. Uh, at the meeting at Dr. Madonia's house, I was in the hospital with my sister, so I was not able to attend. But that does concern me, the fencing. It also concerns me where the dumpster will be located as in relation to my property, my home. And I am in agreement with the gentleman before me that the time at 11 o'clock is much too late for our area. If you will drive up and si down Old Shell Road at night uh, coming from Spring Hill Shopping Center, going west, nobody's around at 9 o'clock. No, no business is open and pumping at 9 o'clock. So I think it would be more than reasonable to put a restriction on this time for closing to be 9 o'clock. And that's my opinion, of course, and I do appreciate your time. Well, thank you. Any questions? Okay, I think, is there anyone else? I think that concludes the public comments. All right, discussion of the board. Um, I think they want to oh, we do? You have a brief yeah. response. Yeah, absolutely. Um, to address Ms. Tanner, it is noted that she does own the property. She's never lived there. It's a rental property. Um, as well as Mr. Stiegel, like he mentioned, with all due respect, he was late to the meeting at the Madonias, um, and two of your neighbors, two of the neighbors uh, had applauded us and stood up. Um, we are willing to, to compromise with the neighbors on the, the use of time um, and are willing during weekdays, Monday through Thursday, um, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m., um, Friday and Saturday, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., and Sundays, um, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. 
uh, also she noted that the the dumpster was between the building it's not it's behind our building um, right there on the the video but it appears on the drawing that it will be in a pad that is directly west of her property it is directly west and, and in accordance with the village of Spring Hill we will do the fencing that they want us to along her property line and what type of fencing uh, just with what's in accordance of, of the village of Spring Hill most likely wood fencing Todd, will there also be a, uh, any kind of fencing around the dumpster at all, or will it be? Okay? Yes, we plan on putting fencing around the, the dumpster, absolutely. And to make note on that, the, the dumpster's pad will also be concrete, just so none of that collects there. Yeah, I think that's a requirement of the city anyway. Sure. With the yeah. gate. Yeah. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, question for the applicant. Would you um, restate those hours, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Monday through Thursday, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 6 a.m. You said not oh, earlier. Excuse me. I, I'm so sorry. I'm sorry. In the audience, yes. please. Yeah. yeah. yeah uh, please. Monday through Thursday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Friday and Saturday, 6 a.m. to 10 p.m. And then Sunday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay, and the aggregate for the gravel, the crust, I take it there would be an apron where the, you reach the easement for the city? Yes, sir. Okay. And it, it, I guess it should be noted, you know, between the parking lot and those sidewalks that are border drive, that is going to be, you know, sidewalks so the aggregate cannot wash out into the road. The sidewalks will be a continuation of the existing Correct. sidewalks. Okay. Okay. Any further questions? Once again. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. I'll make the motion. Bert, do you have something to add? You start to say something. Okay. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Metcalf. <clears throat> I move that we approve the um, application with the limitation of the hours from uh, six to ten p.m. on Friday and Saturday. Sunday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., and Monday through Thursday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Second. Okay, can you repeat that, please? So, if you will, repeat that. Everything? Yes. Okay. Um, the limitations being the hours of operation on Friday and Saturday from 6 a.m. to 10 p.m., Sunday, 6 a.m. to 8 p.m., Thursday, uh, Monday through Thursdays, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Okay. And I have a second. Second. Any further discussion? Yes, sir, Mr. Chairman. I'm uh, very pleased with this uh, proposal that's before us uh, based upon the one we had previously. However, I am uh, still pleased with uh, the time proposal that the applicant has placed before us. I think a lot of effort has gone into this and I see a lot of cohesiveness in the community as it relates to everything that the applicant is proposing. But for the sake of compromise and the motion, I offered my second. But I think the applicant has done a tremendous job in trying to turn this around for the community. I appreciate that. All right. Uh, I want to make sure we've got any other conditions covered here. Uh, Mr. Metcalf, your motion was a variance on the screening as well? Yes. The aggregate? Yes. And then the use? Yes. Was there any other conditions work that was required? No, sir. Okay. And the use is restricted to a restaurant by nonconforming use, correct? Uh, no, no, the use would be restricted based on the variance request. I mean the variance request today. Yes. Correct. Okay. I have a motion to second with those conditions. All those in favor say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? A hey, motion carries. Thank you all. All right. all right. Thank you. We're going to give you a minute or two to uh, exit if you would, unless you want to sit around and listen to the rest of it.
Y'all have a good day. Thank you. Thank you all. Yeah. All right. Next application is 801 Spring Hill Avenue. Quiet, please. 801 Spring Hill Avenue, <coughs> Mr. Stedman. This is application 6160. And your name and address for the record, sir? Good afternoon. Alan Stedham, 1730 Erdman Avenue. Uh, the property in question is 801 Spring Hill Avenue. That's the International Union Operating Engineer's Office. We're asking for a variance on the, uh, the landscaping. We went before the CRC. They approved our fencing. But we're asking to a variance on the landscaping due to safety. We have a lot of trouble in that area now with vagrants at night around behind the building and all. And I feel like if we put the the landscaping all around with the fence too, it's just gonna be that much worse with the vagrants trying, you know, around it, you know, back at the back. The police can't see when they driving by. But we're we we have no problem doing the black fence. We're just asking on the variance on the for the landscaping there. Just, you can see in the pictures the parking lot the asphalt goes all the way to the sidewalk. It's gonna be a financial burden trying to have the asphalt dug up. There's no have to have irrig irrigation. <coughs> It appears your driveway or access is directly along that fence line. You yes, sir. You don't actually have any space between it and the fence line. No, sir. I was go to the, like I say, the, the fence line runs right all the way to the sidewalk. And then you can see the asphalt goes, you know, it meets at the sidewalk. The grass is on the, would be between the street and the sidewalk. Well, the pictures I'm looking at, oh, I see another one. Okay. Any questions of the board for the applicant? The existing fence is a chain link. Correct? Yes, sir. They and said that's not in compliance, so we're we're willing to, to go to the black uh, decorative wrought iron type fence. We just asked him to if we get a variance on the landscaping. Okay. Any questions of the board once again for the applicant? All right. Anyone else in the audience? Uh, in favor of this application? Anyone in opposition today? Okay, we have a letter from the CRC that, let me find it. Got a couple things here. Oh, here it is in my hand. Um, well, first of all, we, as a board, based on, the, I guess, the uh, the rules associated with our function is that we cannot consider financial hardship as part of a decision as relates to this board's action. But um, and it, their statement also says that numerous other properties within the DDD have brought their property into compliance. This property is not substantially different, nor is it a, being treated differently from other similar properties. Um, I think what you're trying to infor uh, inform the board would be that the space for the landscape buffering requirement would impede upon your driveway, drive access? Um, no, sir. If you, the pitch, if you look at the apron, the fence stops but to, before you get to the actual, the apron for the turning in. Correct. But what I'm... I guess what I'm trying to say is that for the, lawn, the landscaping requirement, there's nowhere to put it unless you tear up asphalt. Yes, sir. Correct, which is the drive area for your parking lot. Yes, sir. So you would lose parking spaces and have to restripe it to accommodate that. Yes, sir. Okay. All right. Anyone in opposition, once again? Staff, you have anything? Well, I just wanted to point out, if you look up on the map, essentially uh, the parking area up here is almost a full apron, so they really cannot put any of the fencing here at all. Uh, but they can put fencing along Spring Hill Avenue and then for the area here along St. Francis Street where they do not have access points or where they will retain a gate, um, they would put up the fencing and the buffer. 
is what would be required by the regulations. Well, I guess my statement was that I understand tearing up asphalt is not uncommon put in landscaping, but that serves as the main primary drive for this parking lot. Yes. So then the parking spaces would be eliminated. Uh, that is possible, and that is possible with other sites in the downtown area as well. Yeah. Has traffic looked at this from a flow of traffic? And Thank you. All right. Uh, questions or comments from the board? Mr. Chairman, I, I do have concerns with the waiving the uh, landscape requirement. I mean, I, there are already a number of people who have had to do it downtown. Uh, I'm a building owner downtown and have looked at it, and we're going to do it. And I think there are some options landscape wise, whether it's, you know, it's growing some type of vine, keeping the shrubs low. I don't quite understand or I guess agree that it, it immediately creates a you know safety hazard uh, either from you know uh, vagrants or you know traffic I mean if you look around the number of people who have already done it and done it successfully it seems like it's been done the concern I have as well is that you know you have all these property owners that are complying to it and then you know we make an exception here I'm just not sure that that sets the right precedent so those are my concerns. All right. Thank you. Any other comments? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, uh, is it, for the staff, is that is there options for like planners that can be done rather than digging the ground? Well, the way the ordinance has been amended is to allow uh, evergreen vines, which wouldn't require an entire area to be torn up, just a small area for each vine, uh, or an evergreen hedge. Uh, but planters would not be allowed unless he came back to the CRC, presented a proposal that they felt could be uh, essentially equal to a screening requirement. Then they could consider it. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Okay, I would agree with Mr. Millings that we have to be consistent from a, a re review process. The other variances we've approved in the past were specific to more of existing um, brick and wrought iron uh, fences and buffers that were already had been there for many, many years. Um, since you're willing to change the fence without question, that's not necessarily an issue. But the buffer, the vegetative buffer would be. Okay, Chair, entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we deny this request. Second. I have a motion with a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. Sorry. All right. All right. Uh, application 6161. This is 907 Hillcrest Road, Suite F and G. It looks like you brought a picture for us. I do. It's in the payment. Your name and address, please. Um, I'm Cheryl Ancrum. I live at 408 Judson Drive in Mobile, Alabama at 36608. And I do have this as well. And I'll tell you what that is. It's a picture of what my business looks like when we're in having a paint show and then also a letter. Wine and Canvas is a franchise that was started in Indianapolis, Indiana in 2010. And it is, we currently have 55 locations, um, with this one now in Mobile being the first one in Alabama. Um, we are seeking to lease the space on Hillcrest Road, 907, um, to have an actual studio. Some of the locations, and I have since January, just functioned in restaurants and venues in town. And we would like to um, have a studio where we can teach paint classes and part of the 
the venue or the studio would be to actually be able to have wine and cocktails that we would serve in the studio, but during the paint class. So we are currently um, with the city being classified as a restaurant or bar type venue. And so our purpose here today is to not be classified as such as that is not the primary purpose of our business. And so, because I know that I'm a strong visual person, I did bring the painting. This is what our business is. So we will teach um, people who have pre-registered to come in. So for instance, a picture of this is on my calendar for this coming Monday night at Half Shell. Um, anyone who wants to paint this picture will register online, will show up, and they will be taught to paint the picture. So on Monday night when I'm at Half Shell, anything they want to eat or drink, Half Shell will get the business from that. When I open my own studio, I would like to be able to serve wine and cocktails um, to the people as they're painting in the studio. And so what that does is it allows me to be able to teach classes on the weekends versus just usually when I go into a restaurant venue, they want me in on the slower nights, which is Monday and Tuesday, and I typically don't get as much as big of a crowd there. Also, by having the studio, I will teach what's called cookies and canvas. We will have um, parties for children. We do Saturday morning um, 9 to 11 shows for kids. So it's really a, um, an entire family can come and participate and do something in the arts. So we just want to be reclassified so that we have enough parking spaces in the space that I want to lease on Hillcrest Road. Because as we're classified as a restaurant or a bar, we, we don't, won't have enough. But if we are... Um, one to 300 instead of one to 100, then we would have enough. And considering that we don't, I mean, we're not in business to bring, people cannot come in off the street and drink with us. You can't just walk in and have, have a glass of wine. You have to have pre-registered and be in the paint class. Um, I actually taught at the studio in Indiana. I'm from Mobile, we lived in Indiana for about three years and I was fortunate enough to teach for them in that studio. And I would be willing to say that um, in any given night, on Friday or Saturday night, at least half the people don't even drink alcohol, or if they do, it's one drink. It's, you know, kind of like when ladies have their hair done and, you know, you might be offered a glass of wine or while you're having your nails done. It's more of just a while you're there. People do not come in for the purpose of, of consuming massive alcohol because they're there to paint. So um, I just would like to be reclassified with the board today. Any questions for the applicant? I have a question, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Um, what are most of your classes? When, when, are, when is the parking demand? Is it during okay, well, 8 to 5? Okay, well, my calendar, my public calendar um, will be, um, I'll start out probably with about eight classes for the whole month. So Thursday, Friday, and Saturday evenings. Um, again, on Saturday, I would have most of the day as well. I'll do the children's class in the morning and then possibly one in the afternoon. The goal would be to build that, of course, to have a few more. Um, but unless it just cr gets crazy, I doubt I would do Monday through Wednesday classes. The exception to that would be a private event. We do do private events. If a group or corporation came in and wanted to host on a, on a weekday night other than the weekend nights, we would accommodate that. Okay, thanks. What's your maximum uh, stations? I'm Painting. sorry? How many painting stations are you going to have? Um, I would like to have between 50 and 75. Will the occupancy of the building? I'm sorry? Will the occupancy of the building allow that? Yes. Are we sure on that? What's the what's the square footage? It's 24. About 25. I'm not sure what the occupancy load of the building would be. I don't know if that's been determined. That's not something that the zoning would have. Yeah, normally we have fire here, but they're not here. So. I've, there's, you're at an assembly when you're over a certain size. That's oh, okay. why I'm asking that question, because then it ties into your parking. Um, so you're talking 50 to 75 people, plus how many um, um, instructors? We usually have one instructor and one assistant. So two plus, so maybe max 77. Mm -hmm. So you could potentially have 77 cars in the parking lot at max. Well, most people do this as a group. So most no. people are going to come with their friends and coworkers, that sort of thing. Right. What's the other um, occupants in this? Okay. What, what's the other occupants in this uh, complex? Do you remember who the other tenants are? We, the other tenants, we currently have, what, three other tenants? We have the... Um, you're, you're, you're listed in here. 
I'm just asking her if, so I can. Well, there are several that are vacant. There's a nail shop, there's um, Snow Dash, which is ice cream. Yeah. There's an Asian restaurant, and then Miss Blum's office is on the very yeah, end. I'm pretty familiar, but there's okay. a couple of tenants that are newer, and I'm not sure. Right. Okay. Which, which suite are you looking to go into? It's F and G, you know. That's the F and suite. G? Is that what It's the one directly, yeah, F and G, that's it. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, yes. what was, what's the, the time frame for each session? It's a three hour class. Three hour class. Is there a restriction on the amount of wine that can you do that time? Yes. I mean, we, as far as, you mean, is there a restriction on the amount of wine they can have? Yes. I actually haven't even thought of that because I've never been in a class where I've seen someone <laughs> drink that way because that's, that's not how it's set up. But we can absolutely put a restriction is on it. Is there a restriction? for no wine during the time that you're doing class for children? I'm sorry, but I didn't understand. Any restriction during the time that you're doing classes with the children? Oh, absolutely, we won't serve at all. I'm not talking about the children getting, I'm talking about the adults. Right, no, we don't serve the adults or the children during okay. that time frame. No, absolutely not. All right, any other questions for the board for the applicant? Uh, Mr. Chairman, really yes. more of a statement. It, so it looks like that there's seven spaces in this building according to the site plan and you're you would be one of those that is correct and the total parking for the entire site is 78 correct what the uh, report says um 76 to 78 okay so potentially your use um could take up every space in the complex potentially yeah and there's a restaurant in there i'm sure that they operate during those same hours Okay. How does your landlord feel about this, the I'm owner of the building? Mrs. My Blum. name is Angela Blum, and I am the owner of the building. Your address, I'm, I'm the landlord. Your address, too, for, for the records, please. My address, my office address is 915 Hillcrest Road. It's adjoining, not that they're adjoining buildings. And uh, my office is there. Thank you. And, and, and I counted the spaces this morning. There are 80 parking spaces total. Okay. Okay. Any other questions? Bert, if they did not serve alcohol, what would they be limited to space-wise? Well, uh, they would be parked at a one parking space per 300 square foot ratio. So that would be uh, seven parking spaces. But since they are actually serving beer and wine um, for a price, then the only way we have in our ordinance to interpret it as, is as a restaurant or bar, which is a one parking space per 100 square foot ratio. Now, there are uh, businesses that will serve their patrons wine or other beverage, adult beverages uh, just as a, at no cost. So it doesn't turn a hair salon into a bar, but you still have a, a similar issue. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes. So Bert, I guess two things. One is the administrative appeal, which seems logical to me that you know, they're not classified as a bar, is one thing. But the second thing is, to me, is, you know, is that type of use appropriate with the limited parking that they have? But I mean, from my standpoint, I mean, that's a landlord's yeah. decision if, if they're going to monopolize their parking with, you know, one tenant. Well, you know. the use, if, if the serving of alcohol wasn't the issue, then the use would be allowed by right. Mm -hmm. So they could go in there now if they were not selling alcohol to their customers. One other question, I guess, as far as the alcohol, I mean, they'll have to get a license from... Well, the ABC board, that business goes out. What happens to that license? That license goes away? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Any further questions or comments? All right. Anyone else in the audience? Ma'am, do you have anything else to add? No, I was talking to the owner first. Oh. Oh. <laughs> no. Okay. I, I don't have anything we appreciate further you coming to add. Down, I, yeah. think, I think she would do well there, and I think there will be adequate parking. Okay. Uh, you have something 
Yeah, name, just one thing I wanted to add. When name we and doing, address. When we were doing the name analysis. And name and address. Oh, Angela MacArthur. My address is 1 St. Louis, um, Mobile, Alabama, 36682. <clears throat> All right. Um, when we were doing the analysis on when people would be in operation at the building in, with her, there's only a one hour overlap. She opens at four, most of the businesses in the center close at five. So everybody's pretty much going home about the time they're getting cranked up, other than on Saturday when she has the cookies and canvas, which is the children coming in with their parents. Okay, any questions? I have seen that you have another restaurant in there, and it looks like they're quite busy. So what do you mean another restaurant? Well, you had a, uh, like, uh, Chinese or Asian? Yes, it was bought out, and so it's, it's still one restaurant in the center. It, yes, and it looks like they're, on average, because I kind of drive by there routinely, it's about 15 cars or so. Mm -hmm. most, most of the time they're in Correct. operation, at least in the evenings. So you'll be competing with that. The other businesses didn't appear to have a whole lot at this point. So. No, they're closed in, at five. Okay. All right, anyone else that wishes to speak in favor of this application? Anyone in opposition today? Okay. Um, I have a question for you. Sure. Because I think you, you have a possible option here, is if the board didn't approve it because of the wine and and alcohol sales if that was built into your just your fees and you just arbitrarily gave it to the, the customers that were obviously of age is that something any of your other franchise offered? not that i'm aware of I, I don't think that any of them do that without actually selling it okay just just a yeah, thought i mean it's i'm i'm always open yeah. for options <laughs> okay also, I did, not, I did not mention, but I did get the chance to speak with the majority of the few other tenants that are in there, and they are in favor of me coming in. I went and talked with them personally. So yeah, I think you could me. kind of co-support each other by business coming in for yours that would attend. Exactly. Or, or, or support <laughs> exactly. the others. Yes. All right. Uh, once again, anyone in the audience either in favor or opposition? Okay. Questions, comments of the board? <coughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes. I think that the applicant has demonstrated um, adequate uh, support for her request. And I think that the other issues, like Mr. Milling says, are landlord issues and not really ours to, uh, um, uh, to address. So I move for approval of the uh, request. Second. Can I, can I request a specific motion or a comment as part of that? That compliance with all other. Certainly. Because compliance the with all the codes and ordinances. Going to be specific to well, us. in this case, the only thing before the commission yeah, is, is the, the parking ratio. Do you support the staff of one to one hundred, or do you support the applicant's uh, challenge of one to three hundred? Well, I think Mr. Metcalf's. I support the challenge because I think she's demonstrated that it's not. I mean, y'all are in. A, what we're trying to do is uh, um, um, is eliminate a gray area. Right. And I think they've done that. So that's and it establishes also the precedent for this type of business down the road for us. That's right, and I'm okay with that. Second. Can that's a motion, motion, isn't it? Yep, that's a motion. Yeah, second. Yeah. Second. Yeah. second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, and all <laughs> All right, uh, application 6162, 921 Dolphin Street. Good afternoon, my name is Taylor Atchison, 921 Dolphin Street. I um, just wanted to explain real quick on our request. We requested a surface variance and met with the fire department on site this morning. Um, have found that that is not going to be something that we can work through with them, so we're wanting to withdraw that request. So you're withdrawing your request? For the surface variance. For the surface variance. Uh, the okay. lighting variance was um, recommended for approval from the staff, and I just wanted to answer any questions if anyone had any on the lighting. Okay. Any questions for the board for the applicant? So Taylor, now after that meeting, what will y'all have to do now? What will you pay? 
Uh, we will have to um, do concrete or asphalt or some sort of um, for the pervi entrance and the paver to um, kind of walk the line to uh, serve the fire department and our um, uh, engineering standards. <coughs> but we right. had a pretty detailed morning this meeting. I mean, meeting this morning. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Taylor, is that uh, to support the fire truck to be able to get in and support the weight? It is, yeah. yeah. Uh, 75,000. You're not going to get out of that one. Pounds, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I tried a lot of I know. I tried it too. Do so. they have any lighter fire trucks? <laughs> <laughs> we put in a request for uh, fire truck bicycles, but they. <laughs> All right. Any other questions of the board for the applicant? All right, so you're withdrawing the request for the um, paving material or alternate aggregate surface, and the staff has agreed to the variance for the lighting. Is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. Is there anyone in the audience in favor of this application? Anyone in opposition? All right. Uh, questions, comments from the board? Chair, entertain a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that we approve the uh, lighting variance as requested. Okay, I have a motion to approve the lighting variance. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Okay, application 6163. This is 4568 Halls Mill Road. Hello, David Schumer, 3213, Midtown Park South. All right, and the staff's recommended denial on everything for you. You want to tell us why we have to think otherwise? Well, this is just a surface variance, asking for the aggregate parking for part of the development. Uh, the, there's two parking areas that are proposed for this redevelopment of the old school that I think has been vacant since the mid-2000s. Uh, it had gravel parking in the north portion and limited paved parking on the south side and we are just requesting to alleviate the allow gravel parking up there which is you know will be for some of the extra activities gym activities and stuff like that while most of the teachers and stuff will likely park on the south lot during the day and regular school hours uh, as normal operation so that extra parking lots kind of overflow in for activities it would alleviate some of the storm water. This is in the Halls Mill Creek, which is a priority waterway for ADEM for runoff and, and stuff like that. So it's in an in a area like that. And the school has been in existence, though it's been vacant for a period of time since the 60s, where it had gravel parking as its primary in that same area. Okay, now it appears from the uh, site plan that there's gravel from Hallsville Road to the first pavement? No, that's existing pavement. Oh, so it's existing. Yeah, it's okay. just that north area up there. And we, we carried the pavement up to in front of the building and kind of in a leg to the west for there's a fire hydrant up there that would okay, appease so the, the fire. So the section from Halls Mill up to the first paved area, that's paved as well? That's existing pavement right now. Okay. It does. And it'll, it'll probably be overlaid to match uh, okay. if the owner desires but that that's an existing paved drive up to where that existing concrete area is and then it's gravel to the north but we would carry pavement in front of the building and that little leg for a fire truck turnaround to meet the fire How code are the parking spaces identified you have stops or in the gravel in the gravel yeah there'll be parking bumpers to prevent the cars from going into the landscaped areas around it and that yeah there'll be the parking bumper in front of each space Okay. And there'll be a parking bumper regardless. Okay. Any questions mm -hmm. of the applicant? It's a school. David, what school is it that's going in? School. What school is going in? Uh, I don't know the exact name. Dunaway is the official name of the school. Uh, right now, they're going to they're gonna try to open up a camp this summer and then slowly, I think, build uh, as part of the, just a school and try to get, I guess, some of the kids. I don't know 
like an official name, but they're just trying to redevelop the school and, and they're trying to rehab a lot of the ball fields and, and stuff like that and kind of make it usable for community. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, is is current, or currently, uh, is there any uh, um, drainage and detention on the property? Or is it just all surface sheet drain? Right now, it's currently all surface sheet drain. We would still provide some detention up by it uh, in that area to kind of help abate any in improvements from what it is right now, because you can see most of that gravel has been, if you look at an 84 photograph, you can see the gravel more predominant because it was more active. Where would, it, where would the outfall be? There, there, there's a ditch or swale running down either side of the entrance drive going out to Halls so it, Mill it'd Road. come back it would come back to Halls Mill correct okay and uh, I know one of the reasons for that the city doesn't like gravel is the tracking onto the roads and this is over 600 feet any of the gravel would be over 600 feet away from any travel way from the city so there wouldn't be any real no chance of any tracking or dragging it back aggregate on you know and it doesn't really impact or hurt any neighbors any other questions for the applicant all right anyone in the audience in favor of this application anyone in the opposition yes sir if you have a seat please come on sir your name and address please my, na my name is Jack Saulberger. I live at 1591 Regency Drive, which is right across the fence line against from the IMS school. I strongly recommend and support your staff decision to d disallow aggregate on, on this surface. This paving is over 30, the asphalt is 30 years old. The only aggregate is there is where they were trying to patch it's asphalt that was that was uh, torn up it, where the asphalt got holes. Then they put aggregate in. That's the only way any aggregate ever got in there. I don't think aggregate was ever approved for that site in the past. And I just strongly support the staff recommendation. They anticipate having 900 students there. I can't tell you how many cars be traveling over that aggregate. It just, I, in my opinion, it will not work and it's, not in compliance with city ordinances and it's not in compliance with your staff recommendation so i strongly support the staff recommendation okay any questions yeah mr chairman yes. um sir i agree that that it, it, that's why they're here for a variance because it is a uh, um, um not allowed by code but w out of curiosity what is your concern about it because because first of all it creates dust and the dust will flow over into our residence and uh, I, I just, my, my house, you see where that yellow fence line is on the very back? My house is right in back of that and there are 10 or 15 houses all along. I live on Regency Drive at the very top. You can see it say Regency Drive. I, I back up almost to where that first building is, the, the long rectangular one. Is there any fencing on that property? There is, there is fencing, what but it's kind? all deteriorated, and I, I think they're required to put up new fencing by the uh, Planning Commission when they... Yes, I came before the Planning Commission last week. Uh, they are required to put up a minimum six-foot-high wooden privacy fence wherever the property abuts residentially used uh, uses. And that was approved? Yes. Okay, thank you. Sir, how long have you lived at... I have lived in that neighborhood for 40 years. I've lived in that particular house for 11 years. So uh, they've been closed. They, they closed in 2005. Okay. And, uh, the, but the, the, you know, they stopped maintaining the parking lot at about 2000. So that, you know, that, 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 that asphalt is at least 20 to 25 years old that's, that's there. And it's and I feel that they need to completely redo the paving and the whole thing with asphalt or concrete. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Question for staff: When planning looked at this, did they look at the capacity for parking? Obviously, I would think based on the estimated number of students. Well, the parking uh, for the grade levels. This is going through elementary school, I believe, and the parking is based on teaching stations. 
Uh, so based on that, they're required to have uh, 98 parking spaces for the site, and the site plan uh, shows 104 spaces. So they will have sufficient parking. Uh, as proposed, 41 of the parking spaces would be aggregate or have aggregate surfacing. Okay. All right. Once again, any other questions of the board? You have a brief uh, comment? No, just we found no evidence that there was ever asphalt on that north parking. Going back to the 84 aerial, it's clear that it's gravel because it's, it's not very defined. And just going out there, you, we didn't see any remnants of any existing asphalt uh, in existence. And the, the, purchase, the, the owner it seems to believe that it was never paved in the past. So at least that portion that we're, we're requesting. So the rest of it you're going to pave except for that one area as depicted on the drawings? Yes, the, the parking lot to the south of the, the building that is kind of T-shaped is going to be asphalt. And then a section back and where the handicap spaces Yeah, are. all of the handicaps will be paved with a full paved access to, you know, for the accessible routes. Okay. I think Mr. Metcalf asked regarding the drainage, so. All right, thank you. Mr. Chairman, I do have a question real quick, just as a clarification. The entrance right now is, I mean, the way I look at this drawing, it appears to me that it's aggregate as well. I apologize. That, that was intended to show that it's a, an existing. It's going to be, is it going to be paved? It's an existing asphalt pattern. And they, they may overlay it, but it's an existing asphalt drive okay. from the road all the way up to where we're showing the connection and in, in the new asphalt that's shaded. So the only aggregate area is what is notated on this parking lot to the north with it says Correct. aggregate. Okay. okay, any other questions of the board for the applicant? I have a question. What the what is the hardship? It's just the area of pavement that would be added to the runoff for the whole site. It is a priority waterway for ADEM. Uh, it's not going to create a tracking hazard onto the city, but the drainage, I mean, that's primarily the reason for most aggregate when I come up here and ask for aggregate. It's just to abate the drainage, and this is mostly overflow parking that's not going to have cars, so it's going to be just an empty parking lot during school hours. I'm sure some of the teachers will park over there depending on where their classes are. Uh, but based on the teaching stations and the staff, the, it'll be able to be handled primarily by the, the paved parking. And so this is mostly overflow parking for events and being that we're in a priority waterway. Uh, that's an ADEM. It's uh, for just, it's, it's just trying to keep as much water out of the storm drainage system as possible. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Um, with regard to the drainage, if it were to be paved, that area there, and if it does have, if it currently has the remnants of aggregate, uh, would there be a credit in that situation for, um, for detention? And the reason I'm asking is that if it were to be paved, kind of going on on his his uh, his points, if it were to be paved, would additional detention be required so we wouldn't have additional runoff? That's really a question for the engineering department. Uh, they base credit on what existed in 1984 aerials. So Mr. Davis can answer that. Did you get the? Uh, I, I didn't hear all of the question, but as far as drainage is concerned, when they submit their land disturbance permit, they're going to show me the increase in runoff, whatever they're proposing, whether they're using aggregate, asphalt, concrete, or grass. So we'll look at that in the total for the proposed project. They do get credit for what's shown on the 1984 aerial, and so they'll be able to subtract that runoff from 1984 from their requirement and they'll provide that detention. Does that answer your question? Yeah, to a degree. Again, what I'm trying to figure out is, is um, if they pave that area, would it increase the runoff or would they have to detain that runoff to where it's no I, more than it is today? 
I cannot answer that question because I don't know how much asphalt they're putting or how much credit they're going to get from the 1984 aerial. Okay, I can, I can, I can give you a little bit of insight. The, the detention reduces the flow rate, not the flow volume, not the overall, you know, so by allowing more impervious area or more pervious area and reducing the impervious area, you're allowing more infiltration rather than just routing it to a detention pond that regulates how fast it flows out. So this, by allowing more pervious area, you are reducing the total discharge from the site rather than a detention pond that just regulates Outflow. the flow rate. Right. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, to clarify, if, if they pave it as opposed to gravel, they will have more detention required. And there's no curbs on this for the gravel either, right? It will put curbs to, to maintain the gravel. Okay. Well, that's, that's a positive. All right. Any other questions of the board? Um, I would state that my understanding of this area, many of the older businesses, especially those that are set back from the road like this, have gravel with a paved apron and access road, but um, quite a few of them actually have gravel or some kind of aggregate that I know of. Um, and the stormwater is obviously something that the city, we've had these discussions on previous aggregate and surface um, variance request. So anyway, with that in mind, I'll open it up for a motion. Any further comments then? Any questions or concerns? Mr. Chairman? Yes. I think that um, going off of what the applicant stated as his reasoning for hardship, he's failed to uh, demonstrate that. And given that, I move for uh, denial of the application. Okay, second. I have a motion to deny. Do I have a second? Second. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Okay, I opposed the motion. I was in support of the request, but it fails, the, the variance request. Thanks. All right, next application. Design team, sign company. This is 2540 Old Shell Road, 61, 64, 56, 35, 404, and 1858. Um, my name is John Vallis, 2600 Dolphin Street. I'm here representing the landlord. Also, Jerry Johnson is here representing the tenant shrimp basket. This building is located at the corner of Old Shell Road and Florida Street in, in front of the new Publix that will soon be opening. Prior to this opening, we reached out to the tenant and expressed an interest in making some improvements to this building, um, which includes painting the entire building there when shrimp basket originally opened they had kind of what i would consider a very cheap canvas awning and some cheap railing that was on the front of the building and we asked the tenant if they would up upgrade that awning and railing and then also on the back of this building is an exposed walk-in cooler and mechanical if you'll see that picture on the right there's an exposed walk-in cooler with a mechanical railing and so we're again we're painting all of that the tenant has elected to relocate some signs that were on the building they're going to remove the canvas awning on the front of the building and replace that with a standing metal seam awning this canvas awning although you can't tell in that far right picture currently has a lettering on it that's considered signage the new standing seam metal awning will not have any lettering on it and we think this is a great enhancement to the area the railing for that sign is also going to be uh, upgraded as well as opposed to the cheap aluminum look it's going to have a uh, heavier iron look let me see i had a couple of notes here therefore with the improvements we firmly believe you know that this would be an, an improvement to the area i know the the staff had pointed out that approving this variance will be contrary to the public interest and in that it will allow for disproportionate amount of signage. But again, we're not adding any new signage to the building. 
the signage that's currently on the Florida Street side, which are channel ladders on Florida Street, that sign will be removed from Florida Street and put on the back of the building. That is not, ex that is not visible to any residential area. It'll only be um, visible to really the public's parking field. So again, we're not adding any new signage to the building. Another comment was that substantial justice should not be done to the surrounding area. I'd like to point out this same area is currently <coughs> experiencing a tremendous revitalization, not only with the ongoing public's project, but there's numerous street and sidewalk improvements, new traffic signals, um, crosswalks, landscaping that are very consistent with the entire Midtown movement and the Old Shore Road plan. This, ap this application is requesting removing a cheap canvas awning with lettering to replace with a metal canopy that has no lettering along Old Shell Road. This application is requesting to remove channel letter signage presently on Florida Street and move to the back of the building. By doing both, the application is substantially removing the total number of signs visible to both Old Shell Road and Florida Street. I don't think there's any argument here that this would not be an injustice to the surrounding area, but rather, in fact, the exact movement and request that, that is being requested in that area. Uh, again, as for a hardship, you know, it just seems like maybe the, the sign ordinance itself, you know, could be outdated for, for these type of applications. Uh, you'll see that there's out parcels at different shopping centers throughout Mobile. That, that may be a front out parcel with a shopping center behind it, and, and there would be a request to put signage on the back of that building. But again, we'd like to just state the fact that we're removing substantial signage on both Old Shore Road and Florida Street and putting it on the back of a building that's not visible to any residential area. And I think, Jerry, do you want to um, add anything? Before yeah. you proceed, Go ahead. how many signs are on the building now? Two. Yeah, so there's a, there's a front sign that's still going to remain on Old Shore Road, Correct. and this and the side of the building has channel letters that will be put on the back of the building. So, so there's the two. channel letters that were on Florida Street will be moved now to the public's parking lot side of the facility. Correct to the yeah, back of the walk-in cooler is what we call it. Okay. And then what was on the canopy? On the canopy, it just had some letters that said fish, shrimp, oysters. It had so all that'll get be removed correct I think it had five names five seafood items and uh, it's going to be put on the back of the building with just what you see there so it is going to be moved around to the public side as the, well the awning itself is not going to be moved around the awning is being replaced the canvas awning is going away a standing metal seam awning is going up I'm talking about just the, the those the yes, words those words correct yeah so there's going to be a backer where you see a mechanical uh, railing on the back of that cooler it's going, to, it's going to be add what we call a back or kind of like an ephus or construction material where it's not going to like railing anymore. It's just going to be a solid material, and that's where those three items will be put, seafood, right. pull boys, and oysters. A, a big, uh, Jerry Johnson, uh, 6878 Plantation Boulevard, Pensacola. Um, yes, we're not increasing, as John said, any of the overall square footage of the signage, simply relocating to address the new development behind us. Um, what you see there on the back is not the canopy on the blue strip, that's simply flush with the building itself. Okay, the, we originally approved the variance for the awning, right? I think so. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. Wasn't there a freestanding sign out at Old Shell, a series of those as well? There w were posts along yeah. Old Shell with various other businesses, but I don't no recall seeing used. them anymore. Yeah, there, there we have railroad ties, um, but there's actually none of them in use currently. That's not to say they won't be, but G. Harvell had one. His building has since been demolished, so there's no signage there and there's a railroad tie in front of this building but it doesn't have the little medallion on it for any of the tenants okay so we don't know if those are going to be uh, put in use again we don't okay any questions of the board all right anyone in the audience in favor or opposition okay Mr. Chairman, I have a question for yes. um, the staff. What What is the spirit behind the existing ordinance to not allow a sign on the rear of the building? Was it 
done prior to the thought of having a, a larger development behind it or uh, well I'm not sure what the intent was uh, you know as you know it allows an end cap unit to have a sign facing the front as well as a sign on the sidewall if it faces a street uh, there are instances which you recall where the board has approved additional signage on the rear of a building such as out at Children Airport in that shopping center on several I think at least two of the tenants out there and then also um, in the annex area on range line and government it may be that the ordinance uh, is out of date as it relates to uh, out parcels relating to the main portion of a development so but as it is written and as we have to enforce it a sign like this would not be allowed how about the coverage area for this building I, I believe that's not going to be an issue at all okay all right any other questions for the board for the applicant all right discussion of the board comments motion mr. chairman I move for approval second a motion to approve second all those in favor of the motion say aye aye, aye. anyone opposed okay motion carries This is application 6165, 1124 Hillcrest Road. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Good afternoon. My name is Alan Chastain. I'm with LA Signs here in Mobile in 1591 Theodore. We're here today to request a variance for an electronic message center to be installed an existing sign uh, located at 1124 Hillcrest Road. Uh, the company is called A&W Lighting. They've been in the Mobile area and through this particular location for many years. And the owner, Randall Woodham, is here today um, to express his um, desire to want to have an electronic message center there. Um, Mr. Randall wanted to install a electronic message center on his property in place of a changeable message board. And if you look at changeable message boards today, uh, sometimes you can look at them and they actually look a little bit dated because of technology and how it's advancing. So he wanted to, uh, and I've had a handout too, I'm not sure if everybody's got one there in front of you, but you can see the existing sign and what it looks like right now, how it's got a message board built into it. Um, and so we want to take that message board, ineffective message board out and install a LED sign in its place there where uh, Randall can effectively communicate to those driving by um, about his services and become, everyone can become aware of what he's uh, selling and what he's trying to promote to the community. Um, we went to the, to the city of Mobile to request a sign permit for it and it would be approved. Um, however, we have uh, two properties that are considered residential within 300 feet of the actual sign location. Uh, one of them is the Volunteers of America, which is located just south of the property on Hillcrest, three properties down. Um, they're a residential property. And back in 2015, they were granted a variance to have an electronic message center on the property for obviously good purposes uh, to communicate their messages to the community. And um, so they're allowed to have one, and then there is an adjacent property on the back side, and you can see here he's pointing to where it's at now. Um, this is the second residential property that is within 300 feet. The actual house itself, you can see it's quite a distance from the sign. Uh, it's a fight, I think it was 523 feet away from that. There is a lot of thick foliage all the way through there, as well as there's another picture there. You can see there's buildings in the way and there is literally zero percent chance that this sign can be seen from the residential property there um, so um, as you can see in the uh, staff recommendations and the notes that they have uh, that they have uh, listed on this case here um, they also notice that the foliage and the buildings and the fence will not uh, affect the residential property 
it's quite a distance away so there's no really effect on that one residential property and the second residential property as we discussed is a church volunteers of america that already has an electronic message center on it so um we appreciate the comments by the city as uh, they said here um, that the board has been sympathetic to the request of this type of uh, sign when it will not directly affect any other residential properties in the area uh, due to being obstructions in the way and that literal enforcement of the sign ordinance for this electronic message center would impose a hardship upon uh, this um, business so respectfully, we're here before the board to request that a variance be granted so we can install this small, approximately two foot message center in place of that reader board so that uh, this business can continue to successfully communicate with people and grow. And if you have any questions, I, I can answer them for you. Okay, any questions of the board for the applicant? Yeah, Mr. Chair, yeah, Mr. Rose. Yes. The closest residence is the five, that's the closest five hundred one two. The closest residential property is the Volunteer for Volunteers of America, just south, and that it's, uh, you can see there, 300 feet touches their property line there. They have the message center. But the B, the, I think that that's the letter B I'm looking at up there on that property, that's where the actual house is at, 523 feet away. Okay, now I remember the uh, VOA request, and it was because there's a little grass strip that goes to Hillcrest that maintain a residential uh, classification. And that's well, that's for the Hillcrest Crossing development, which is immediately to the south and west of the site. But as he stated, uh, the Volunteers of America site is itself residentially zoned for multifamily. Right. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I have a question. That yes, please. For the applicant. The, um, the, the LED is going here in this section here. Yes, it'll be replacing the message board that's there. We're not increasing any size of the actual sign itself, just taking that out and putting some more updated technology in it. Okay, thanks. Okay. Any further questions? Will, will it run 24-7? Um, at this point, I'm not sure if the owner would like to run it 24-7. Um, but if you'll come you, up, you can ask. give us your name and address, sir. My name is Randy Woodham. 1124 Hillcrest Road. Uh, and may I say, first of all, I really appreciate what you folks do. <laughs> Having everybody leave, now I realize that you really do an incredible job here. That's not to, just to butter you up, it, but just to say really. We get, yeah. But to answer your question, our sign stays on, actually it stays on uh, from dusk to dawn right now. The new sign, the segment of this one, will stay on 24-7 because we're continually wanting to communicate with the thousands of people who come up and down Hillcrest Road. Uh, this relatively two foot by eight foot section of our sign presently has letters on it that we physically have to carry out there and rearrange each time we have a new message. And it's so cumbersome to do that that it really takes us sometimes weeks or months before we put a new message up. But we've been there for 24 years and over the last uh, six years, everything is graduated or gravitated toward LED technology anyway. So that now uh, almost 100% of the non-decorative products that we sell are LED. Uh, so we need the LED technology also to communicate what we do. We're professionals at doing lighting and people are always asking us about LED products for their residents, for their businesses, and this will effectively let us communicate that technology so that we can give them immediate information on different products that have become available that they may have an interest in and we'd like to invite them in so that we can tell them more about it so the sign will run 24 7 is what our plans are okay any other questions it, just looking at the pictures and based on my familiarity with this area just getting to your sign to do the changes means you had to climb over your landscaping and that's right to, that alone would be a little bit of a hardship I could see we didn't think about that when we put it in yeah or your landscaping we did get the beautification award one time from the right. city of Mobile for those shrubberies yeah that whole area through there always looks nice 
All right. Um, one of the concerns we usually have as a board is when you do have LED lights, that at night that they have a dimmer function? It is a function of the sign. It's meeting that criteria, the sign ordinance that makes right. it dim down to, I can't remember what the candela yeah, is. Yeah, the foot candles is a lower level. Yes. All right. Any, uh, anyone in the audience either in favor or opposition? Okay. Any other questions of the board? Comments? Okay. Chair, entertain a motion. To approve, uh, accept, subject to the staff recommendation. Second. Okay, approval of the variance subject to staff recommendations. Second. Any further comment, questions? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, guys. All right, application 6166. This is 1558, 1560 West Avenue. And thank you for your patience waiting all this time. All right, let me see. Let's get back on. My name is William T. Partridge. I'm represent uh, of Coast Architects at 6425 Jordan Drive in Daphne. I'm representing St. Joseph Catholic Church of Maysville. Um, what we were doing is requesting a simple roof covering over the uh, already existing front door. Um, it's, um, it's just to provide rain protection over that front door and as well the only other improvement that's on that, um, on our... Have you seen staff's recommendations? Yeah, and, and we're good with them. Okay. We're, we're all good. I'll save you the, some time. I was going to say that's really all, all right. I'm is we're good with what staff Any recommend. questions of the board for the applicant? And just for a matter of record, we don't have anyone either <laughs> in favor or in opposition appears in the audience. All right. Uh, questions of the board? All right. Chair, entertain a motion. So move, Mr. Chair. Subject to staff recommendation. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Thank anyone you. opposed? The motion carries. Thank you again Thank for your you. patience. All right, any other business today? And then we want to recognize uh, Richard for his many years of service. And uh, hey, Richard, hey. I wish I, I should have done that when we had a full audience. <laughs> I won't say that, but I will say I am not going to miss coming to these meetings much. <laughs> well, we wish you well, and thank you for your many years of service. Thank you. Any Please other business? Yes, sir. All right. Motion to adjourn. Yeah. I'm here, man. Oh, all those favor aye. I'm sure going to try that. Thank you all. <laughs>